right, so I'm playing around with my ESP32 microcontroller board um, with the goal of um, generating um, waveform outputs from the uh, DAC channels. And there's two DAC channels over here, um, GPIO 25 and 26. And I've got my board hooked up with uh, the GPIO 25 connected to my Digital and Electronics Explorer board um, so I can look at the waveform output. And um, But I don't know a whole lot about it, and the uh, API docs are kind of uh, extensive, difficult to dig through, so I turned to chat GPT. I had some code that was running, but it wasn't very satisfactory in that I wasn't able to control the frequency the way that I wanted to. Um, the highest frequency I could get to was uh, one kilohertz because there were some um, kind of hard-coded delays uh, between the upper portion and the lower portion of the square wave uh, going from max uh, amplitude, in other words, down to a zero volt amplitude. So I turned to ChatGPT and I said, how can I control the frequency of a DAC square wave output on an ESP32? And so it gave me an answer. It said, uh, use the setup method to enable the DAC output and then in the loop just call DAC output voltage and then do a delay between the call to the high voltage and the call to the low voltage and so then it spit out the code and I copied and pasted that in and it's certainly compiled but um, the way that they're doing it here here's that delay between the um, call to the DAC output voltage method which sends the the uh, voltage out of a certain DAC channel at the max value, then delays, and then sends the DAC output voltage to the same channel at zero volts. So you're basically going from a high to a low uh, in the square wave. But because of these delays, um, that they're really controlling the frequency rather than um, you know the, being able to control it as, using another parameter. So um, I continued after experimenting with that and said to a chat GPT, this, this approach will only allow frequencies up to one kilohertz since function V task delay takes an integer data type as an argument. And it agreed, it said, you're correct. It will only allow frequencies up to one kilohertz, blah, blah, blah. Then it said to generate a square wave with a higher frequency using a timer, you can do the following. And it gives a whole bunch of explanations about how the timer would be uh, used how you can set the period of the timer, and how you have a callback alarm um, function, and then you call DAC output voltage. So in this case, you're basically setting up a timer with a callback uh, that can have, um, I believe, um, microsecond um, resolution, and then it gave the code. So even though I just I kind of inferred that I wanted the code and inferred that there was a problem, it said, yeah, there's a problem, it explained why there's a problem, and then went on to give me a solution. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. So um, I copied and pasted this code in. It does have a few little quirks, a few little issues, um, but it did compile. And I put that into my, um, you know, my editor here, <laughs> VS Code, uh, with Platform I/O. And um, one of the issues is that it doesn't understand that the ESP32 the max value for the uh, DAC is only 255, not uh, 4096. It's, it's thinking it's a 12-bit rather than an 8-bit DAC, probably because of um, all the code that's out there for Arduinos. But anyway, with a couple of minor changes, uh, the code runs fine, and um, here it is running. I've got I've got it uh, outputting to my um, Digital and Electronics Explorer board. And here's the waveform. <laughs> and it's indeed, it's giving me the frequency that I specified exactly, um, 3 kilohertz. There was an issue there, by the way. And so I went back to chat GPT because it was only giving me half of the frequency that I was asking for. So I, so I came back and I said, uh, one of the arguments to the timer alarm, and it gives me information about that so I could kind of understand what was happening within that timer alarm um, call where you're setting the time for the callback and then I went on to say there seems to be a bug in the function time alarm right the resulting frequency is one half of the expected value and said there are a few potential reasons for uh, the resulting frequency being half of the half of the expected value 
And it was exactly right. It pointed out that the square wave state is being toggled only once per timer interrupt. In other words, it's going up to the maximum and then down to the zero value. So it has to be toggled twice. So then it suggested, uh, you know, dividing the, the frequency by two, which I had already done, but um, to get it to work. But uh, that's where right here I'm doing that uh, divide by two. Um, and I put a note in here as to why that's the why that's necessary. But anyway, it just floored me how how amazing this chat GPT is at coming up with solutions. And this was just uh, in a matter of a few minutes. Um, I've had a conversation with it, and um, it went beyond my questions to actually provide answers and code even before I asked for the code. So anyway, um, the it's pretty cool that this uh, you know waveform generator with the ESP32 can go up to like uh, 44 kilohertz. It starts to generate some spikes. You can see a little bit going on there, um, even right here. And actually, let me expand that, and you can see that it's, there's a little bit of ringing going on. Let's see. Here we go. You can see that ringing. So, yeah, there are some limitations. Probably have to put some, um, you know, um, capacitor filtration on the on the output. But uh, I'm not sure how far you could push the ESP32. But anyway, I'll post this code. Uh, it's pretty cool, and I, I'm going to go on to do sine wave and uh, triangular wave and. Um, anyway, that's it for here. Thanks for watching.